It's been a little while since we last talked, right? We are talking about Bible stories. And we last talked about Noah and the ark and the flood and the dove and all of these things, which kind of brought us back to baptism because this is where again we see the dove, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. After the flood, we know that from the eight people who rode out the flood on the ark, there came to be again many, many human beings and cities and civilizations. And at one point, they decided to build a tower. Do you know the story? So they built a tower and they said, we're going to build it high enough that we can touch God. Can you touch God? No. But they figured they'd be able to build it very, very tall. And it says God came down and he looked at what they were doing, which is a way of describing that God is paying attention to what his creation is up to. And he says, hmm, they all speak the same language. Somehow they're all cooperating and working together. And whatever they decide to do, they will do. Is that a good thing? Uh, it depends. That's a, good, uh, that's a good answer. But generally speaking, if human beings can get whatever they want, is that a good thing? Do we tend to choose the right stuff? Not so much. So, God comes down. Does he kill them all? No, we already did that. That was the flood. We're done with killing everybody. That was the promise, by the way. So God comes and he says, the problem here is that they can all communicate so smoothly. So, we'll change the languages. So he confuses the tongues, it says. So that where they had been working together without any miscommunication, now they couldn't even understand what they were saying. Someone would say, bring me that lithos. And they would say that, what? What's a lithos? Did you just call my mother something? And then they'd fight. And then they stopped building the tower and they went their separate ways. Now, this is a neat little story. And it is the Bible's explanation, the Hebrew tradition coming down through the centuries until they wrote it down, of why it was that all of the human beings who had a common origin spoke different languages. The point is for us to recognize it's not always a good thing for us to get what we want, right? Because we have no expectation from our own past or from all of human history that what we want is actually the right thing. We know if we could only work together and cooperate, we could probably do anything we set our minds to. God made us that close to him. The question is, is it good to do so? And for those of us who follow Christ, we are called always to weigh what it is that we want in the light of what the Lord tells us is good for us, what we know ourselves to be good for us. So if you ever wonder why it is that the church says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other thing, I ask you to do me a favor. If you ever hear anybody saying, me or anyone else in the church or even your parents, if they say, don't do this, don't do that, you can ask why. It's a common question, right? But the better question to ask is, what should I do instead, right? Because God created us for action. He made us to do and build and experience things. And most of them are blessed and good. And if we are ever told, 
don't do this, don't touch that, never have anything to do with that, whatever that might be. What we should ask is not, okay, so how close can I get to that without actually doing it, right? Without stepping over the line, how close can I get to what's forbidden? Instead of asking that question, we should ask, what am I supposed to be doing? What is the good thing that God has given me? Right? Now, it might be that your mother says, don't eat cookies before dinner, and you say, well, what am I supposed to eat instead? And she says, broccoli. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll like it, but it's the right question to ask. Because then you're not just thinking about how people are mean and telling you no. You're understanding that God has given us many blessings and we need to seek those good things, not the broken things that we can sometimes replace them with. Make sense? So, in short, Tower of Babel means just because we want it doesn't mean it's good. Ultimately, this is what we're doing when we fast. We're not fasting now, we've got a good month. But when we're fasting, we put aside what we want and we look for what we need. So we put away the ice cream and the hamburgers and we turn our mouths, our hearts and our minds, not to fakes and beans and salads, although those are good, but we turn our hearts and our mouths to Christ and we receive communion. This is what fasting is about. So, having said that, let's stand up and take communion. Welcome back to Sunday School. <laughs>